So my presentation deals with uh, the issue of housing in Addis Ababa. Uh, I will cover three main aspects in, in this presentation. Uh, first, I will take you through the current situation of housing in Addis Ababa. And then uh, the focus would be on the grand housing project, which is commonly known in Addis, the condominium housing. Then uh, we would look at the lessons learned and then the last bit would be uh, what could be done next. But first, the current situation of housing in Addis Ababa. Uh, well, we have a little bit old uh, statistics taken in 2007, uh, the census. Uh, here, more, it says more than about 40% they live below standard. The majority of the households are tenants. And the present, the current master plan or the structure plan developed estimates the housing need is about 1.2 million for Addis. Most of the residents of Addis Ababa, they live in informally built housing, commonly known in Addis Kabele housing, after the local government that manages this kind of housing. Uh, earlier you asked whether there is home-based enterprise, and most of the Kabele houses, they have home-based enterprise, like you can see in the photo here. In this simple uh, room to the right, uh, three by eight, uh, there are so many activities going on, uh, uh, making beverages, bunk beds, keeping goats, and then vending, like an, you can see. So, so many activities happen in, in a very simple units in Kabele uh, housing, mainly located in the inner city. In fact, about 70% of the residents of Addis live in informally built such kind of housing. Uh, and then we have informally built peripheral settlements like you see in this slide. Um, the, well, uh, the 2002 master plan, which is revised uh, in 2013, uh, envisioned most of the core area, the map you see in Ad the Addis map, the core area, the, the, the red one, was earmarked for uh, renewal and then the light rate for upgrading, and then the yellow one for expansion or uh, new uh, construction of housing. So the big condominium sites, the vast ones, we have them in the, in the outskirts of Addis Ababa. Based on this intervention map, then uh, we had, uh, you might have seen this already, in the inner city, in the core city, uh, extensive renewal in Lideta, Kazanches, uh, and many parts of the city. Um, and then we have upgrading, mostly infrastructure upgrading, without touching the houses, uh, because there was the, most of our master plans, they envisioned it ambitiously that they don't want to touch the houses because then they would ask compensation later when it is renewed. So we only have uh, drainage system, roads and pedestrian or public toilets and so on. Then, uh, the famous uh, condominium housing, which started in 2005 with a pilot project in 2004. Uh, we had uh, an, a very impressive quantity in terms of quantity, about more than 250,000 were built in a scheme known as 1090, 2080, and 460. The 1090 means 10, the pe people should save 10% and 90%. They would take it from uh, mortgage from the Commercial Bank of Ethiopia. 20, 80, 20 saving and 80% from loans, and then 460, 40% saving and 60% from loans. Uh, the condominium housing in terms of land, uh, it is estimated about 149 hectare per year. It, it, it took this kind of land. Well, uh, uh, again, there is a challenge in terms of uh, uh, land for housing. The city is bounded by another um, region so it's almost exhausted the land for, for, for housing. Then when it comes to the area of uh, IHDP units, the studio, the average area is 25 meters square, one bedroom is 35 meters square, two bedroom 55, and three bedroom 65 meters squares. So the red one, uh, I just, okay. Um, well, then how, did we, how was this achieved? 
There is a huge subsidy estimated from 60% up to 80%. Uh, well, I have to quickly go. Uh, so that, that's one of the polit uh, expression of political co uh, commitments. So there is, a, there is a really huge subsidy. Yeah. Uh, and the impact in terms of the positive impacts are the quantity, job creation, it encourages savings, uh, relatively privacy and modern facilities and improved social facilities. Uh, but the challenge is the bottom 40% of the people, they cannot afford this, even the minimum type of uh, housing. Uh, and uh, the lessons learned from this type of housing is one is of targeting of mismatch of the subsidy. So there is a lot of down rating, mismanagement, slow pace of delivery, and many uh, other challenges also. So ultimately, there is, we have realized that the Kabele housing is the most affordable type of housing. But there is a jump from the Kabele housing to a condominium housing. So my message is housing not, should, not, be, should uh, not only for all, but it should be done by all. That's my simple message of today. And then the ladder, uh, I will jump this one, the housing ladder, the jump from the affordable type of housing, in our case, the, the Kabele housing and the informal housing, to the next, this uh, condominium housing, there is a big jump, and people cannot afford that. So my message again is we need to have a ladder of small risers where people can smoothly go from one type of housing to the next type of housing. So simply housing for all and by all. Thank you. Uh, for those of you who are not architects in a room, a riser is the space between one step and the next. <laughs> so some of those steps are impossible. They become too much. Let's move straight on to Melinda and the Singapore example.